Let's begin with the uh, minutes from prior meeting. Um, are there any discussions regarding the minutes them themselves? No? Okay. I make a motion we accept the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Let's go. Let's take let's take the order. We'll go. Patty? Uh, yes. If you notice, I put you right up top this time. Oh, you're the best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Aye. Bob? Yep. Jim? Yes. Fred? Yes. Dan? Aye. And yes for me as well. Paul, yes. Aye. Okay. Good. All right. Um, all righty. Let's head to our second. Uh, before before we get into it, Brian, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm I'm going to hang in there for the next. Uh, I'll give you ten minutes at least. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll try to make this as quick as possible. Okay. I'm, I All right. All righty. Um, our second part of the agenda review discuss and possibly vote on all fiscal year 2022 operating budgets, capital budgets, and miscellaneous spending articles. Okay, so did everybody receive the necessary documents that were at the uh, town offices? Yes. yes. Yes? Okay. All right, good. All right, um, Brian, what are your suggestions as to how we should start here. Um, I know we had some discussion at the last meeting and um, possibly I should just open this up. Um, Brian, okay, let's take this up. But before we jump on this, does anyone have general discussion questions that they'd like to see developed at this meeting regarding any of the expenditures. All right, Brian, go ahead. All right, so let me just tell you what I what I went back and did based on the last finance the last finance committee meeting. Okay. Um, so what I did was um, based on the the cold decision and the salary adjustments that that were voted, I went back through and I adjusted all the budgets um accordingly as right. when we talk about it it's it should, it's a line item that's thrown on at the end but we need i need to go back through and, and attribute those to all the different departments and, and boards and committees um so i did that for the cola and i did that for salary adjustments um the other thing that that happened between now and our last meeting was the um the house ways and means came out with this budget so yep. some of these some of the um, some of these numbers on the right, um, state and county charges, uh, and some of the revenue that are, are based on state projections. I adjusted that to the House Ways and Means budget. Um, again, those are those are estimates. We don't know till they um, till the Senate and the House and the governor agree as to what those numbers will be. Um, we know last fiscal year it took forever, um, right. and then some. Uh, I think it's going to be a more normal, um, a more normal timeline this year, but I, I don't really know for sure. Um, <laughs> they're at least a lot further along than they were last year. Um, so some of these numbers um, changed as well. I had two questions that um, I had answered from our last discussion, and these were in regards to some of the capital items. Um, I checked with a member of the CPC about the eligibility of the um, the cemetery fence and cemetery gates for CP CPA funding, mm -hmm. um, and their their opinion was that it was that it was not eligible. Um, not okay. And I think where do we have that? Were we carrying that? I got to move my Zoom screen. I think we pushed that off to next year. <clears throat> yeah, I think we moved that to next year. Okay. And they, right, we don't have it funded at right in, in the sheet here. We don't have it funded. No. Um, okay. So that's not CPA eligible in their opinion. It was some of its maintenance, and then it doesn't really fit one of the one of the eligible categories. 
um, unless we can, unless they can somehow show that it's um, historic fencing or something that, which it, which it may be, but um, but their opinion yeah. was that it wasn't. And then the, there was a question about if the the cost of the of the oven at the elementary school included installation. It, and Bill Hildreth uh, tells me that it, that does include that. Okay. Um, With no modifications. So that's a firm number. That's a firm number. I'll believe that's what I'm told. Yeah. Don't I'll shoot the messenger. Yep. Yeah. I know. I know. I don't know how you can know anything until you get into it. Is, is it a firm number with a quote attached to it? Like, here's my quote, I'll hold it for 90 days, or is it a firm number? This is number? the school we're talking about. They don't operate like that. Okay. So that's, in my opinion, ballpark. not a firm number. It's this a ballpark. Is a ballpark. Okay. That's what we got. That's what we're going to go with. <laughs> so so you can go with. No, no, agreed. So agreed. Agreed. I'm just, I, you know, expect it to change. Hopefully it'll go down. You never know. Oh, uh, for sure. One cannot if, hope if it goes down, they'll, get, they'll give us the money back. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know better happen. than that. Well, it's it's a it's a special account, so uh, if they don't use it, we will get it back. But yeah, true. So sometimes the account gets spent. <laughs> yeah, magically. Um. So those are the changes. Okay. Those are the questions that I had um, in terms of the budget. There were, there were two other. There was one other change. Well, there's really two other things I want to talk about, um, and I can have Lynn chime, uh, Lynn chime in on one of them. Um, one is some changes that we anticipate um, with the town clerk treasurer collector position um, for next year. Um, I sent you. I sent the finance committee a, a quick memo on that. Sure. Um, yep. So let me stop share this for a second. Um, so essentially, and I should let Lynn speak on the history of this because it predates me, but um, at one point, the treasurer collector town clerk position were separate. Um, and and just, uh, just to throw this out there, the town clerk in Waitley is elected. Um, so it just so happens that Lynn was elected every year and she was appointed as a treasurer collector. And that's how it has been that we, since, since I've been there, um, Lynn probably knows how long it's been, but, um, so it's always been a, a single combined position. Um, so Lynn tells me that she doesn't want to do the town clerk forever. Um, and so at some point those positions are going to be split. Um, well, we're anticipating that they'll be split. Um, so uh, how it was before is that there was a treasure collector with a part-time assistant, part-time payroll clerk, right, Lynn? Just that's, a payroll clerk. Yeah, that's essentially what, what, what we would return back to. It was um, a 30-hour treasure collector with a, um, I don't remember the exact hours for the payroll clerk, but I... I would guess it was between 10 and, I mean, five and 10 hours. Um, and that's how it was when some of you were, you, most of you have been around long enough for Susan Warner. That's how it was set up when she was here. Um, then when uh, Susan left, they decided to, well, Nancy was also at 30. Um, and then when Nancy left, and I came back, they made it, they split it out so that we would have an assistant treasurer and the treasurer collector. The, the clerk is really a separate position. It just so happens I'm in the same, the three positions. So they made it a, a 20 hour for the treasurer collector and 20 hours for the assistant or 15 hours for the assistant. Um, it, that was kind of a trial run to see if it really, functioned well at that time. And it also gave me the opportunity to do both positions. However, in looking back at it, I'm not sure it had the efficiencies we had hoped to have between having the um, assistant with more hours. Um, so at this point in time, it's kind of like, maybe we should go back to the 30 hours. 
Um, the, yeah, I, the reason this triggered, as you know, I was planning on exiting next year um, and not running for office again next year. Uh, because there's been, the assistant treasurer collector has, has an opportunity to have a job closer to home, um, but she'd still like to do the payroll section of the job here in Waitley. Uh, it kind of, we felt it was a good opportunity to reevaluate the positions and determine what would be the best option. Um, as you also may know, I've, all, I've been kind of working with Amy to take kind of, She's the assistant town clerk. So she's, I've been working with her on that, uh, trying to get somebody up and working in that position um, so that a transition would be smooth. Um, so I guess the proposal right now is to make the treasurer collector's position back to a 30 hour position and the assistant treasurer collector would be 10 hours a week. That does result in a change in the dollar amount uh, for the salaries because the treasurer collector has a higher salary than the, and would be taking over 10 hours. And then the um, assistant treasurer collector would have um, just the 10 hours. Uh, so I think Brian did a calculation on that. And I don't know if Brian wants to jump in here or not. Um, yeah, it's but listed. It be about a what, $9,000 difference. Yeah, it's updated in, in, their, in, the, in their budget. In the big, so, big budget sheets. But one so of the advantages not is, um, well, to us, the, the finance committee advantage, uh, Janet would no longer be eligible for benefits. So she would be getting her insurance from her other job. So um, that's a, a th that savings there would more than cover that $9,000 savings for um this, I'm sorry, my brain is not functioning. The savings from the health insurance would cover the, the increase in costs for the treasurer collector budget. So can someone just say what the change would be? I mean, I know what we have now. It would be um, we'd have a town clerk, we'd have a treasurer collector, and we, then we'd have an assistant treasurer collector. Right, well, we have- And a, then we'd have um, somebody for payroll. The assistant Treasurer collector does the payroll right now. Okay. So and that, that's okay. what she would still be doing. That's that's where I got lost. Yeah. So we <laughs> okay. have a 30 hour treasurer collector, mm -hmm. a 10 hour a week um, assistant treasurer collector. The town clerk's position would stay at 22 hours a week and they would still be a five hour assistant. So the town clerk position doesn't change any, it's right. just the treasurer collector side. Right, it was the assistant based versus the yeah. payroll part that I that the the job description that I was missing. So right okay. now, the assistant treasurer collector does payroll, and okay. Janet would still still continue to do the payroll. Okay, okay thank you. Are there any questions? Um, from anyone regarding this change. Um, I have one um, and Lynn, you probably know that I was around when the change occurred last time. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Tommy was around and Dan was around as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, part of the impetus to make, to combine both of those um, both of those positions was that neither one of them allowed an individual, you know, the kind of compensation um, to attract individuals into the positions. So putting them together um, allowed us to offer that. Right. You're, um, you're talking about the treasurer collector positions being combined, right? Um, 
because the town clerk yeah, is a totally I separate a separate position. So years ago, we combined the treasurer collector position. Um, they were both um, elected and they were um, not enough hours to really attract someone. You're right on that. And they combined the two in 1998. Mm -hmm. They combined the two into one appointed position for the treasurer collector. Okay, so that's what I was think thinking about. Okay, I think so. Yep. Um, we had, so we I had guess problems I'm... keeping somebody. We we went through quite a few people there at one point. Yeah, probably yeah. true. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I mean, luckily right now we have people in place that are willing to and want to see these kinds of changes. Um, I would just hope that downstream as individuals um, decide to go on to greener pastures or whatever that we can, um, you know, position the town so that other individuals want to fill those roles. Um, I think making it 30 hours, the treasurer collector's position 30 hours does that. Um, I think it'd be an attractive position for someone to take yeah. over. The payroll clerk side of it, um, the payroll clerk is technically under the umbrella of the uh, treasurer collector. You may see a change that the treasurer collector wants to take over that role and make it a 40 hour week. I don't, you know, sure. I don't know that that would happen, but um, cause the payroll is a very specialized thing. And once you learn it, mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but, um, no, I think that that would be attractive. The 10 hour payroll clerk, it's basically, um, Janet does it in like two days. Um, okay. Yeah, cause it's, uh, it's a two day process. You have to enter stuff on one day and then process everything the next day. So, yeah. okay. Um, and I think someone would, would take over that as well. Um, you know, for a 10 hour job, granted it's not benefited, but um, yep. you know, someone with, who wants just a little extra, mm -hmm. it would be a good job. It, okay. Question, if necessary, is the payroll job something that could be outsourced to a payroll service? If we couldn't find we, someone to do it? Um, it could be, but we've had thing, um, well, just for example, Frontier had outsourced um, accounting service. Well, and part and payroll was included in that. Didn't work out so well. I think it, it's important to have someone who understands the employees in the role. So someone who is more, you know, because a lot of the payroll um, outsourcing, it's not the same person who's doing it every time. It's whoever's available, they do, they do that payroll. Um, I, oh, I, I, I like to don't keep it think in we house. should yeah. do it that way, but as an emer if in an emergency, if we can't find someone yeah. to take I agree, hour, I agree with Fred. Yeah, I mean, you, I, there's someone, some service could take it over, but I, you know, that wouldn't be what I'd recommend. We have to straighten out some of the department heads for that to work. Yeah. <laughs> no name. No, I won't no mention anybody. Spent. But, uh, yeah, uh, but it, quite honestly, a lot of a lot of that time is spent. There, there would need to be time up front to to address some issues. I'm not saying it can't be done, but yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of challenges, and that's kind of what I was. Yeah. I was, more, I was a little bit more. I was a little bit more blunt about it. Knowing the town. <laughs> yeah. It's uh. Care. It is, well, who's uh, run, Janet, it depends. It, it depends on who's running the asylum. All the time. Are the department heads running the town? <clears throat> or are the selectmen? Well, no, it's well. not that. It's just getting the department heads to um, process, comply? Comply. submit things the way they are supposed comply. to be submitted. Comply. That's called complying. Compliance, comply. right? Just exactly. Just a matter of discipline. That's what it is. Well, we have all the, the rules. same issues with the same people over and over and over again. So. Interesting. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. 
I don't understand why we allow that to go on and on like this. Just no, no, no kidding. Discipline. No kidding. That's why they're department heads. It's a good question. Yep. Not our responsibility. That's a select one. That's right. That's personnel. Committee. That's a personnel committee issue. Well, personnel then, but not ours. So, All right, so, gentlemen. Go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say so. So, in terms of in terms of the town clerk position, it's it, it's a little bit unique because it, it's an elected position, so it needs to be from somebody within the town. And you know, a lot of towns went into the problem of, of the person that you elect is not necessarily familiar with That's the job qualified. or qualified, qualified for the job. Um, yep. So, I mean, I think we're fortunate at this point if 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 the the contingency plan is going to work i think we're fortunate but um what do you do down the road if you challenge. don't get anybody qualified oh, question what what do you do you i guess I you muddle, yeah, i guess you muddle you muddle your way through and i guess no, um, you modify the bylaws are you muted no well, um it's an option uh, J Joyce is waving. <laughs> My understanding is we would need to change our bylaws such that we can have a clerk who doesn't live in the town, which would mean an appointed town clerk. And I don't know under the law, which is more traditional to have a select board or a moderator or, or which committee should do the appointment, but there are towns that have appointed town clerks, not elected town clerks. Yeah. There's 168 mm -hmm. elected town clerks in in the state. Out of what? Out of 351. Wow. So elected yeah. clerks, I should say, not town clerks. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, all right, I think, I think the discussion was pretty good. Brian, um, this is already reflected in the budget? Um, it is, yep, it's in that total number. Okay. All righty. Um, while, while we thank you, Lynn, for um, that overview and uh, explanation, um, and hopefully things go smoothly. Um, following that, while we're on the subject of um, personnel, Brian, uh, I thought you did a fine job of putting together the um, the new position and what it entails. Um, do you want to touch on that again um, now that you've written it up and um, and your feelings about it? And there may be some discussion around that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, let me just let me just go back for one second and talk about this. Um, this proposal and then what we just talked about is in terms of the timing of it, the, um, if there's going to be um, a new position, it, it is going to need the, it is going to need uh, to go through the personnel committee and the, the, the select board has the final say on, on these, on these positions. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to, just wanted to say that I haven't had a chance in terms of how the meetings lay out. Um, to present them with, to have these discussions with them, uh, but they mm -hmm. have the material. Um, and in terms of, in terms of the, um, a person to help the boards and committees and, and with grants and stuff like that, I have had that discussion with the select board and that was, um, that was their request that I, that I put something together for their consideration. Um, but yeah, it's, it really, it, it's an attempt to fill holes that I see and that I've seen for a little while. Um, I think there's things that, that boards and committees want to do. Um, it's things that boards and committees, um, I think, in, in some cases should be doing. Um, and, and things are, are things are much more complicated and um, it, it's hard to get volunteers. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure there's yep. stuff that, that even the finance committee would like to do. Um, stuff we may even talk about next on the agenda. Um, it's just hard to find time to do that kind of stuff um, in terms of the financial, you know, I think we're going to talk about financial reporting and tracking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the housing committee and the housing trust has a hundred, I, I don't recall exactly what it is, but 120 something thousand dollars that, that there really hasn't been any movement on um, since for the last maybe it was three or four years. Um, it, it, everything's just complicated and it's complicated for volunteers who, who don't have quite frankly, don't have a hell of a lot of time. Um, everybody's busy with work or jobs and things like that. Um, so, you know, part of that would be helping, helping the boards and committees, um, r really do the work that, I, that I think they want to do. I've heard from the planning board. Um, I think they've been, they've been asking for help for the past probably two or three years. Um, our zoning bylaws definitely could use an update, um, yep. in some of the long range planning that, that, um, that that's not getting done. I don't think our mass, we may have, um, we may have updated chapters of a master plan, but our master plan is not up to date. Um, so there's long range planning that's not happening. Um, we've been able to cobble some of it together in the past couple of years. Um, so not only is the planning useful for, for some of these long range plans, but it also makes us eligible for various types of funding. Um, we just finished the hazard mitigation plan that makes us el eligible for hazard mitigation grants. That was the source of funding that that paid for the um, moving the the Mill River away from the wells. Um, mm -hmm. We're finishing up what's called an MVP plan, um, finishing up an in open space and recreation plan, and all those have. Once we have those, it makes us eligible for for these various funding sources. Um, and what we're finding, at least at least my observation has been, the state creates these programs. And then they throw money at the end as an incentive for us to do it. Um, mm -hmm. So we have an open space and recreation plan, and then we can apply for, you know, trails grants and things like that. Um, that again, that various committees would, that I hear would like to apply for, except we're not eligible. But then there's the question of, okay, how do we develop the project and, and put together the grant application and apply and then manage the grant, administer the grant and, you know, manage the project. Um, so that's that's pretty much what what I see the where that uh, position can fill in. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the other programs that that that's just coming up is the so the states packaged a whole bunch of their old grant programs into something called One Stop for Growth, um, which it seems like a great idea that it's oh it's One Stop for Growth except there's all these requirements up front that all these administrative requirements and, and expressions of interest and, and project development. And there's all these steps that we have to take that for a small community is really hard. Um, it, it takes time and, you know, we don't have a lot of staffing, um, especially from, especially from the administrative town administrator. I'm full-time Amy's 24 hours. Um, so what we do is we we chase deadlines, and a lot of times what happens is, is things that don't have deadlines get pushed off. Um, when personnel you know, and then issues pop up, day to day stuff, personnel issues pop up, and that can that sets us back days in terms of to do lists. Um, so th there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and I think it's in the best interest of the town to do it. I've you've heard my spiel about about new growth and my concerns about future growth. Sure. Um, a lot of yeah. a lot of the things that have driven that Pine Plains Estates and um, it, that's yeah. it's full. Um, and part of what's keep part of what's kept the tax rate lower the past um, I, I don't know ten years, eight to ten years has been the, the new growth that's happened in town because uh, it spreads it out over more. Um, if that shrinks, then we're going to see, we're, we're going to see the tax rates go up. Um, mm -hmm. and that takes planning in my opinion. So I think it's an investment in the town. I think it's worth making. Um, I do want to look, I'm still waiting on the America rescue plan act guidance. Uh, we don't know much about right. that. We were told it can be for economic recovery. We've also known it can be for investments in sewer water broadband infrastructure, but, how you define, uh, you know, investments in economic recovery? I haven't seen that yet. Um, okay. So it may be that that we can shift the cost of this position to that, and we can 
change the title of the position to economic recovery specialist or something to make sure it fits. But, yeah. um, but that's, that's, that's about it. Just, um, you know, I went through the, uh, you know, the salary, the position, uh, the description of the position and it's, uh, it's extensive. Um, but I was wondering at the end, whether or not you had some idea of what your target salary range would be for this position. Um, yeah, so so right now it's included in the budget at, at 55,000. I think it's gonna be somewhere between 50 and 55,000. So you think um, it's that tight, 50 to 55. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that, so that number's in that, with all of these changes that we talked about tonight are in the budget. So anything mm -hmm. that, anything, any changes we make, um, it'll likely be a reduction from that number, from that number that we're seeing on the chart, on the tool. Okay. So regardless, if you got somebody with a master's degree or not, or somebody with extensive public, um, you know, experience, um, you wouldn't go outside of that range then? That no, it, the, the budget's the budget. And that's, I think that's, that's what we have to work with. Okay. What kind of contract? Yeah, we wouldn't want to set that precedent. Lengthwise. Go ahead. How, how long would you want them to commit? Uh, this would just be funded year to year. Because I'd hate to have somebody come on and learn, learn, learn and say adios, amigo. Mm -hmm. it, that's, uh, it's unfortunately something we face with a lot of our positions. Any non-contract position is, is at will and can... They could leave the next day. Sure. And I, I think mass journal law actually limits what we who we can who we can uh, have employment contracts with. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, anything anyone would like to address concerning this position? Okay. All right. Uh, all righty, um, moving forward. Um, Brian, I know that you sent, uh, you sent us, uh, you sent us an email um, concerning um, a vote. And if, if I get the gist of it, does it, is it, um, should we wait till that meeting for the vote on these items? So I, I, I think, I think, yeah, it would be good to take a final vote um, at a, at a future meeting. It can be brief. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we'll have a better handle on is the, the health insurance. It's open enrollment right now when that ends. Okay. Um, actually, I don't know if, well, I got to check on the timing of that again. Um, but uh, things can happen between, you know, now and then and i don't have all the obviously the warrant isn't drafted that's usually what we go through when we vote um right so I, so what i would want to do is i would want to go through and 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 put together the warrant in the budget um yeah you know yeah. as close to final as we can um and then obviously the select board and, and finance committee are the ones who who make recommendations on it and some various other boards and committees um okay. but if we could do that closer to the end of may yeah that would be appreciated Okay. When does the warrant have to be um, finalized? Um, my goal is to have the select board um, sign it on the 26th. Okay. Um, it can go to, so it's seven days. So at, at the, at the latest, it would have to be posted on the 8th of okay. June. Yep. Okay. And uh, our next meeting, um, I don't have the calendar here, but did you say um, May well, 25th? I was, yeah, I was thinking the 25th, that way that it'll. Okay. All right. So 525. All right. Okay. All right. That's good. All righty. Um, anyone like to... Uh, 
further these discussions uh, regarding either one of these new positions um, that are in the budget. <clears throat> okay. Um, next on the agenda, discuss future budget tracking and reporting. Um, and Paul, as, not, sorry, yeah. sorry to go back, but no, go ahead. Th this go. is about the budget in general, Brian. There's nothing in the budget that anticipates money from the American Recovery Act. It, I just want to clarify. If money comes in from that, that can cover what you know, the new position or anything else, yep. ultimately in an in accounting sense, it would show up as free cash because the budgeted money for that expenditure will not have been spent. Yeah, there, I mean, there's two things that that would be the default, right? If if we budgeted say ten thousand dollars for hand sanitizer and we bought right. $10,000 hand sanitizer, right. It would be unspent funds. It would show up as free cash. Um, we can also raise and appropriate at a, at a town meeting, special town meeting until we set the tax rate. So that's October. Um, so, it, so it, it's, it's really within the, the discretion of the select board of finance committee. Let's say we, let's say we say we can use a hundred thousand dollars and that's assuming they'll let us use, you know, use it for an eligible right. purpose. Um, we could say, okay, we're going to go back and we're going to, we're going to modify the budget. Um, and, and we can do that. And that would reduce, it would essentially reduce the okay, $10,000 wouldn't see, go to the tax levy. See accounting wise, what the impact, if we get money that we can use to offset budgeted items. Yep. And, and we have that, we have that decision every year. Um, but we, yeah, we so we, have... we've got a lump of money that we know is sitting there. We just don't know if we can use it yet. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's almost going to be sitting here. It's promised. Well, I mean, it, it's been appropriated by Congress. We right. just don't have federal regulations on it yet for how it can be spent. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it comes in. Um, Okay, um, like to have a, a, a discussion if we could um, concerning the um, how we track the budget, how we report the budget. If you look on the town website, there is a place for the finance committee and the budget that was that was passed on town floor is there. That's from last year and each year it changes. Outside of that, there isn't um, much in the way of communication from the finance committee to the general town as to how their money is being spent and that communication being done in a very basic way so that it's not complicated. They don't have to uh, mesh tables or take a look at different, you know, put different charts together. It's simple. It's there in front of them. And they can look at how costs within the town progress from year to year. And so that they can compare those costs from year to year on um, a rolling basis. So with that said, um, yeah, I kind of brought this up to a head, I guess, because I'm a big believer in transparency. And the more information and the simpler the information to understand what's going on in government, I think the better. Um, so with that, um, I have a few ideas. I'll throw them out there. And I think to begin with, we should look at the larger budget budgets in town. Um, obviously, we have the schools, we have the highway department, we have um, public safety, 
we also have general government as of as of, I mean as of last couple of years um, you know take take the schools out of it insurance and benefits are the um, are the number one dollar budget that we have after that it's general government and following that public works the water department and last public safety so with all of those departments there has to be an easy way for the um, the residents of Waitley the taxpayers of Waitley to take a look at their website and understand how costs are developing over time. Um, I think the schools is a pretty slam dunk, dollars per child in the school. Um, I think roads, you could put dollars per mile. Um, public safety, um, we can go per life. Um, but these are things that um, you know, I think we should talk about and see how, uh, see how we all feel about them. Um, and if we agree that transparency is the best thing um, for inclusion on a town website, um, because the finance committee is the economic watchdog of the town. Um, that's just the way it is. And that's in the state handbook. Um, and it's our job to put the budget together, yes, but it's also our job to be aware of all expenses in town. And I would go so far as to look at things like how many town employees do we have? What has happened to our total compensation per employee over time? Um, what's the median com compensation of employers, of employees in town? Um, all of these things speak to the growth of the town, but they're also a way of allowing the taxpayer to look at where his dollar or her dollar is going. So I'll just open it up to that, and it's open to everybody, and I would hope that people would chime in and, you know, say what they feel. Paul, are you looking at, like, really a year-to-year -year? budget and cost comparison or within a given year? I would think year to year. And I, you know, I think right now we have the ability, irregardless of how we decide that these um, markers are measured, um, we could easily go back three years so that over time you can see a rolling five. Um, one in, one out, so that, you know, we could take a look at, you know, what's, people could take a look at what's going on with the town, and um, how many employees do we have? What, what, what are our, um, what's our total compensation costs out of the budget for employees? And that, that includes schools. Um, so that's what I would think would have some um, would offer the taxpayers, <clears throat> offer the voters a picture. Well, it would show, it show them what's driving the budget and why the prices are going up. I mean, this here is a number. That's all they're really seeing. They have right, like the insurance, insurance and benefits. Is that ten employees? <clears throat> is it eighty? Is it ninety? Or is it six? Do you don't have any idea at all um, what mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would be hesitant to actually post positions, you know, town clerk this much money because everybody knows who I the agree. town clerk is. No, I, think I, that, I think that we have a number of employees, median salary, and this is what the compensation is for, you know, insurance and workman's comp and all this. This is the, our, all of our overhead mm -hmm. that we pay on in addition to the hourly salaries. Right. Um, yep. But I mean, transparency is huge. It really is. I, and I agree with yeah. you. I, but I just think we have to be careful about it. it all state employees, um, federal or salaries and everything are, are public. Trans, uh, aren't they public information? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if they, they really want them, they can get them. But I don't yeah. 
think that on our website, I think we want to give a snapshot of this was, you know, we're in 2021 now. So this is, you know, 19, 20, 21, and now coming up 22. Mm -hmm. And these are our snapshots of what we've paid and how many people we employ. And, and, you know, it, it, it's not going to be an easy thing to put together, but I think we need to be careful about how it gets put together. I agree with you on that, Patty. And I, I mean, there can be no names associated with any of this. That's why I think this has to be done in a collective manner. And we're just looking at the big picture and, um, and individuals can see what's going on in their town um with the running of the town um and but i think that's a good point um any anyone else have any thoughts about this um uh, most of the yep my only question is who would be responsible throughout the year to field questions that come to pass from the members of the town um, when, you know, from the standpoint of peeling the onion back and getting yeah. more layers of detail. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be questions, you know, why is the average so high in this department or much, this much higher in department A versus department B? There's, there's going to have yep. to be someone that has the time and can take the time to field those questions and, and get back with the general public. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that, Jim. There, there, I, I think it's going to create questions. It's going to create people getting into the budget. I think, and I think all of that is good. I think the more questions that are asked and the more communication between um, the government and the people, the people, the government is the people, but the administration and the tax base, um, the voters, um, residents of town, to have that back and forth communication and have people looking through the layers of the onion, as you said, um, it will happen. Do I think there's going to be, there needs to be a person who fields those questions? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that's why we elect people. That's why, that's why we have selectmen. Um, when someone in the community has a question about anything in town, they have elected individuals who are overseeing what, how the town is being run and they either they answer the question or they're able to find the question or find an answer to the question or refer the person to another individual. So I, I don't think there's one person that's going to be um, um, in charge, so to say, so to speak, on individuals asking questions of the data we put on the website. Um, so I think most of that data is going to be, uh, you know, pretty simple. Um, that's what I, I think. I, I would think that for the most part, it would be department heads who would have to answer questions regarding their department. That's but the, Biggest cool. problem with that is that I would bet that the by far the most questions will come in regarding the schools and the yep. school budgets because that's both the largest mm -hmm. money and the largest mm -hmm. uh, annual diff you know variation in budget. Mm -hmm. In general, our our in town department budgets in the five years I've been here have been quite stable. That yep. we haven't oh. had huge increases or de decreases in any of the other departments, the schools are where the, the big variations come. And the question is how transparent is the school budget mm -hmm. and how transparent is that operation to yep. answer the questions people will have? Right, yep. Would the, would the and schools, I think, 
the schools you're dealing with the, with the union too. You're, the teachers are in a union. None of the yep. other town employees are in a union. More bureaucracy. Which, mm-hmm. yeah, which from the personnel committee standpoint is, uh, can be a dicey thing because if the school gives a 2% raise to everybody, you know, per their union contract, well, then the town employees kind of feel like they should get that too. So you feel obligated. Yeah, you do. So you really don't need a personnel committee then. Well, we've had that discussion also. That, <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you get, you feel like you're, uh, it sounds like it. you're held over a barrel and, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and we also have the issue. how I feel about it. Well, getting back no, to do. the schools, yeah. front you know, two of our big expenditures are Frontier, and which we're a small part of and have really no control over the budget at all, and mm-hmm. Franklin County Tech, which we're an even smaller part of and have no control over the budget at all. No. None. None. <laughs> um, but if you, you know... And I'm not, and I'm not you, saying we shouldn't do it, but just keep in mind that big chunks yeah. of our budget are not right. in our control. Right, but right now, if you're a taxpayer in Waitley and you want to know how much you spend per pupil in this town, what do you have to do? You got to get on a state website. You got to go through all of that. And then you're going to get data that's probably two years old. Yeah. Because yeah. by the time they you know, get it all through, get it all in and all that. We, on the other hand, know how many kids we have in our school today. We know how much we spend in our budget today. You can figure it out. And we can put that on our website today. Fine. And so, you know, and I know that um, there may be individuals that feel that some of this information might be misused or well, you can misuse any kind of information, but if the information is real and it's true, then there's no reason why it shouldn't be made available, in my opinion. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, Paul, you know, I completely, Tom, Paul, I completely agree with you. I just think that we have to be very, very careful um, about how we proceed. Right, I think right. I think it's a very good idea to to do this. I think that we we're the ones that approve the budget. Apparently, yep. this is what my fifth meeting, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and and I think that we need to be the ones that have to answer, not the not the department heads, um, because we're the ones that said, "Yep, everybody came to us and said X Y Z, and we agreed with it, or we didn't agree with it." Um, but I also mm-hmm. think that it, as far as employees go, uh, Lynn put something in the chat that said, you know, their benefits, their salaries are, of it, are publicly available, but their benefits are not. Is that P- mm-hmm. PII? I don't know. Um, do we want to put the benefits? I, you know, I think that I, I hate to say this because meetings kill all of us. I work for the government. I know that firsthand. And I think that it's it's a it's well worth looking into and exploring, but I think it needs a, a separate meeting, whether it's just us or I I, I don't know who we we set up a an exploratory committee. I, I don't know, but I think it's mm-hmm. it's not something we're gonna decide tonight. You're absolutely right. And this information right now, tonight, this preliminary discussion, I think is more um, directed towards, um, getting people thinking about it. Um, and you know, how, how we're going to, you know, what are the, what are, what are the main, um, spend? What's the, how do we track the spend over time in our town? And, um, I think the tracking of that spend, um, to be available to all, all of the residents of Waitley on their website, on our website at any time is a good thing. And how we do it, 
Well, I think that's certainly, um, as Patty said, we're not going to, um, you know, come to any kind of agreement on that this evening. But I think over the next uh, couple of meetings, we should be able to, um, you know, put something with clarity on paper and um, so that we can all feel comfortable with that. So that's, um, that's where I am with it. Um, any other thoughts? Um, not no? to not to beat a dead horse, especially since I have horses. No. Um, I, I think <laughs> that this is a separate meeting, not to be confused or intertwined with anything else that we have to do. Yep. I'm with you on that. I agree. Yep. Totally agree. Yep. Uh, seeing how I was the one that sort of got this off the ground a little bit. I won't, I'm not going to burden Brian um, yet, but um, I'll just try to put some kind of an outline together. Um, and, you know, maybe next steps to think about, and I'll send them out and, you know, comment on them as you will. And, um, and we'll resurface at the next meeting on the 25th. And because um, that's going to be a voting meeting, and that's, um, you know, it's probably not going to take up a lot of time. So we may be able to fit something in there. And if we, and we can schedule another meeting after that. So um, oh, does, does that sound reasonable to one and all? Um, yes. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Um, I'll wrap that up and any items anyone would like to throw on the floor at this point for discussion, Brian, anybody else? Hey, Paul, um, one thing that, that, uh, um, I would recommend that the finance committee sort of keep their tabs on is police reform as, as, okay. we, as it, as it kind of, as, as we, as we figure out more details as to what's going to be required and how that's going to You really impact. think it's going to happen this year? This fiscal year, yes, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Really. I think that, I think they'll put in the training requirements, yeah, and, and that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna raise a whole host of issues, and it, it'd be a much broader discussion about yeah. about the most efficient way for us to provide, you know, policing services yep. uh, mm -hmm. over the long term. So I think that's something that 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 we're gonna have to keep our eye on, and I, I don't know how we go about that. I mean, we will obviously. Um, I don't know if we want to put together, and this is for future meeting to talk about, but if we, if we want a representative of the finance committee to, to, to stay on top of it or just, just future thoughts. Um, but it, it, it is going to be significant changes and there's going to be a, a, a price tag associated with those. So. I uh, just, hmm. as an aside, I would kind of hope that that could go through FERCOG or something like that so that we have a regional approach as opposed to a town by town approach. Well, I'm, I would speculate that towns are going to band together to get around the huge cost that's going to be involved per town because some towns won't be able to absorb it. Oh, mm -hmm. especially yeah, in the west. Western yeah, and that's area. kind of my FERCOG comment. You know, is, is if we do it through FERCOG, uh, you know, then we've got the the many municipalities together to move this forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's going to be a problem. I'm afraid. Brian, do you see? Do you see a? Uh, you know, as Bobby said, or uh, uh, well, if you go past the FERCOG, that uh, there may be some consolidation of police departments into uh, awesome. more of a regional policing. I, I think at, at this point, the the discussion's uh, just beginning, um, and I, I don't think we really know what the solution is. Um, and the, the solution may be different for, for each town, depending on, on resources. Uh, I hate to say this, but resources in, in what you value, you know, some people are going to, some towns may be willing to pay X amount of dollars for a local police force. And some towns, you know, may have different values in terms of how much yeah. they want to pay. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So it, it's a much it's a much larger discussion. I just didn't want us to lose sight of that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay. overall, it's a very big discussion, and different. You know, in Franklin County, Greenfield's going to have very different requirements for policing than yep. Waitley is. Yep. And mm -hmm. handling at a regional basis. Yep. Is, you know, there are going to be major issues with that. Yep. Yeah. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention was that um, in terms of anticipated revenue for the upcoming fiscal year, um, I we do anticipate at least one of the uh, the marijuana retail shops to open at the Sugar Loaf shops. Um, so we'll get a 3% excise tax on all of those sales. And there's actually a proposal to put in a it, it hasn't, um, there's a community, it, it has only got to the community outreach meeting level, but there's also a proposal to put a second one um, in there as well from a different company. Um, but, same shops? Yeah. Wow. Well, um, so, wow. Um, so it, it cool. should be next, next door to each other? Yeah. Uh, in wow. the, on the, the one, the gray side facing 116. Ah, no. um, the theory, you know, there's a theory about clustering different uh, similar <coughs> types of establishments so that people sure. um, yep. recognize no, that true. area for that yep. thing. So yep. that may be what you're trying to go after, but um, uh, we'll take 3% of whatever they can get. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. But, yeah, um, so so they're, they're working on the building. Um, they've been working on it for a couple months now. I, I think they're planning on opening up um sometime before the fall so that would give us i don't know nine months of revenue hopefully so th that, that'll be help that that'll be helpful uh because that's general sure. that's general fund money that that we don't currently receive so right yeah brian quick question is the town getting any money for leasing the demeo property for the catering tents yes <laughs> the, the the recorder article was right for once oh <laughs> I didn't yeah. see the recorder article, but okay. Oh. <clears throat> I, 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 right? The recorder article was okay. accurate. Period. End of statement. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. And uh, I just want to say that uh, the uh, 250th anniversary parade was a job well done. And uh, that was fun. Uh, thanks. And, uh, John Hannum and his and his fire department did a yeah, phenomenal yeah. job. Yeah, they pulled absolutely. it together. That was neat. That was a neat thing. Yep. Okay. But this is when Bobby asks how much it cost the fire department <laughs> for, <what? laughs> for the parade. No, because that new truck it cost us. Good thing we got everybody got to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they ever use it, but they got to see it. They got to see. Yeah. People I like, got some great like shots. They like to spend. They like to spend spend their money on things they can see and touch. Yeah, <laughs> and we do at times as well. Okay. Um, any other questions? Any other thoughts? Okay. Meeting is adjourned, and we'll get together on the twenty fifth. And I will have uh, I'll have a follow up to the tracking the spend conversation. Um, hopefully sooner than later.